What's up guys, Kieran McAvoy here from A Clever Chimp and on this channel we talk, learn and discuss about maths, physics and all things engineering. This video is part of our guide to engineering maths and today we're going to be talking about the history of matrices, specifically why they even exist in the maths that we learn today. All of that is coming right up. So what is a matrix? Well, it's a way of storing information, usually numerical, in a rectangular fashion that will either simplify a problem or, in other situations, actually shed light on the problem from a different angle. So before we dive into determinants and the inverse matrix and finding out eigenvectors and eigenvalues and all of that, it's, I think it's so worth to just take a step back and get into the minds of the mathematicians that actually actually discovered this and, and or, or developed it over time. We want to be answering the question of why they even exist. So if you've been introduced to matrices already, you may have had the situation that I had when I was first introduced to matrices that essentially they get you to start using them to solve simultaneous linear equations almost immediately. And you're left there thinking, well, I could do that before I knew matrices. Like, what's, what's that about? Like, what, if, I can, if I can do it without using matrices, then what, you know, why are we even here? What, why are we even bothering? And truthfully, it, it could get quite boring with the idea that that's the main, that, that, was, the, that was what they used for. But, but it turns out that the earliest form of using these numbers in this grid fashion that we now know to be a matrix was in a book called The Nine Chapters on Mathematical Art. And in this book, you could swear it was actually taken out of a modern day, it was a mod modern day, mid-level high school simultaneous equation question where it was actually talking about three fields that used three types of corn to fill them and so therefore you wanted to find out how many how much how much corn was in each different type of corn bag that was that was, that was genuinely what was written in this book when was this book written in 200 bc 200 BC. What? And the remarkable thing about that is that the method that was being used to solve this, these three simultaneous equations with three unknowns was actually, was actually a version of Gaussian elimination, what we know as Gaussian elimination today. But that's not even that's not even the part that really gets me. The real the part that really gets me is that the majority of what you'll be exposed to in terms of matrices in engineering maths all resides in the 19th century. Only a only a couple of thousand years later, you know, it's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So there's three people that I want to talk about from that period, from the 1800s. And by no means, by no means at all, are these three people the only people that developed matrices. By no means is that the case, because in all honesty, when I was doing my research on history, it was, it was hard, because there is so many, so many people that have had a hand in developing the matrices that we know today. Like, it's, it, was, it was crazy, because, you know, at least in some parts of maths, like, you know, as we'll talk about when we come to discussing the fundamentals of calculus later on in these videos, that there was at least like a Hollywood rivalry between Leibniz and Newton that you could latch onto and talk about 
here in a in a in a, in a history video. But that is not the case with matrices at all. <laughs> so so there is heaps of people that are involved with matrices, but the three people that I want to talk about are the people that I feel have developed the things that we learn in engineering maths, especially. They, they, they're, they're the people that I feel are the main contributors to what we learn in engineering maths today. They are Carl Friedrich Gauss, Augustin Louis Cauchy, and Arthur Cayley. Now, Gauss, as you might have already guessed, developed Gaussian elimination. Now, Gaussian elimination has been used for solving simultaneous equations. It is, it's incredibly good at doing that because I don't know about you, but if I have a set of simultaneous equations, probably about more than three or four, to do that, to, to work out the solutions to those equations without arranging it into matrix algebra is incredibly difficult. It just gets messy and I end up repeating myself and going wrong. This variable's over here, this variable's over here, what's going on? But with Gaussian elimination, it's such an incredible tool to be able to keep things neat and allow you to follow and get to the answer neatly and confidently. So next up is this guy called Augustin Louis Cauchy. He was a French mathematician and he was around the 1820s. He was, he was, he was doing a lot of his work and, and his work is mainly on determinants. He was a big player in, in the work on determinants and determinants at the time were just a big craze with, with matrix algebra. Like it was all about the determinants of a matrix. It's all about finding out the solution, whether or not there's solutions or not to a to a set of simultaneous equations, and and what and what that what that means in terms of in terms of the final result, you know, and that was that was what it was all about. He also came up with what's called the characteristic equation, and that's to do with finding the eigenvalues of a matrix. More on that, more on that later on in this guide. But he he paved the way. He paved the way for people like. Arthur Cayley. Now, Arthur Cayley, in my mind, from my research, literally just defined matrix algebra. He he just defined it. He was he was the guy that defined the inverse matrix. Although I'm sure, you know, from the list of people that were involved, people have probably done the inverse matrix by accident before and not really named it or understood what it was. But Arthur Cayley did, and he defined it. And more importantly, he made the step from just understanding it algebraically. He made it. He made the step to actually understanding how matrices work in terms of transforming space, specifically 2D and 3D. So that's about it for this brief history overview of matrices. And believe me, you can you can drown yourself in the history of matrices. Believe you me, but. I hope this has given you at least some sort of backing as to why they even exist, because that just helps in actually just acknowledging that they're worth knowing, you know? It's, matrices unfortunately seem to be seen as the most boring part of engineering maths. And believe, I, I was exactly the same, I felt the exact same way when it came to learning about matrices for the first time. You just they're just, they just look boring as well, but they are so helpful. They are incredibly helpful and I can't wait to get into that later on in these videos. If you like the video, then do leave it a thumbs up and remember to click that subscribe button and hit that bell icon to stay up to date with any new videos coming out from a clever chimp. Thank you very much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.